Frank O'Reilly from County Cavan in Ireland, a well-known character, songwriter and artist. Tony Dunley, Ireland, Kerry. If people saw this now on television, they'd say, yeah, pull the other one, you're too smart for that, O'Donnell. I would say, hang on there a minute, I'm giving it you as I see it. An ordinary, simple labourer just got smart, that was all. That's all it has to be. I suppose I'm here. Close to 40 years, maybe. Yeah. And then I came to Cricklewood. Why did I come? Because there was no work in Ireland. That's the reason. And there was no money there either. There was nothing in Ireland. No, nothing. They all left. We all left because of sheer poverty. So I was damn glad to come back here. And there was plenty of work here. And I worked on sites always and ever as a labourer. I could also drive machines and that, which I did on occasions and sites, but I didn't go in for that work, I went in for the labouring work, you know. For a leaf driver driving a crane, I'd have to climb up about uh, 300 feet, pull me 22 stone up just while somebody was going on a tea break. So I'd climb up one, go up uh, tower ground one, give him a tea break, and when he'd come up then I'd have to go down and I'd have to run up two. Then I'd have to come down it and then run up three. Then it's time for me to have a bite to eat myself. Then I start one, two and three again. This was going on all day. So I stayed for about three days at it. I think I lost three stone in the first three days. Them days have gone. It's just the way it was at the time. It's the way it was. Used to get up in the morning there, shove themselves into a van. Most of them didn't know where they were going. You know, you could finish up in Birmingham, Coventry, Folkestone, down the South End. You had no choice. Fierce hard. Men were working 12, 14, 15 hours, you know. Yeah. Loads of men would be on a bus. Or some of them were on lorries where there was no canopy. So if you imagine a frosty morning in the middle of February, seven degrees below, and you're, 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 and you're in a lorry going along a motorway. I mean, at 40 miles an hour, you were frozen before you could say Bob was your uncle. You were like frozen peas. They had the hard times in the 50s. There was no kind of redundancies, there was no like bonuses and there was no overtime, there was no holiday money. These things never existed, you know. They, all that went into somebody's back pocket, like, you know, higher up in the echelons of the construction. You were on your own, you know. There was no unions or anything like that. You were simply on your own. You could be going to a job in the morning and be fired that afternoon. You had a leg to stand on. I always knew if I was going to be sacked in the morning, you weren't ever sacked, you just let, you, the job wrapped up, you were wrapped up, you were gone. Well, you'd always have another job. Mm -hmm. Not like now. You might be day out or something like that, but that'd be all. You just go to the pub and you'll see somebody inside. You know what I mean? A nod and a wink and a nod, you know, things like that, you know, and everything. Job the next morning. No problem. Well, it was easy to find work, cause I might did the Irish, Jesus yeah. Christ. I can, go, I, can, I can go down to, you know, I can, I can go to China tomorrow morning in Beijing, and if I met an Irishman, I can guarantee you I'd get work in two minutes. So that's just the answer for you, whether it be in Alaska, North America, South America, anywhere. The Irish are that kind of, I don't know, we just, whatever way you, you yeah, just like going into a pub anywhere on the planet, isn't it? You know, if you met an Irishman, it wouldn't be nothing new. Most of the Irish finished up in, in the weekends in Cricklewood, in pubs. There was nothing but pubs at the weekend. That's where they all met. The Crown. The Crown Hotel. The Crown across the road there was a very well-known place. It was great for the Irish music at the weekends. The men told years ago, if you came from Ireland, that you were never in Cricklewood, Broadway, if you wanted the Crown. No. You see? Fight every five minutes there. <laughs> no problem to do that. The cash checks, yeah, they did. Uh, even cash checks in the Crown, one time years ago. Uh, we'd get paid, we handed an envelope in cash a lot of the time, sometimes a cheque. But some of the pubs would cash the cheques up a Friday evening, you know. They couldn't wait, until, wait for it to clear in the bank, they'd have to pay 10 or 20, 30 quid and get it cash right away. You see, there were very strict spots at that time. 
they really want to know the firm that you were working for before they cash your cheque, and they used to have notices up in their pubs too to the effect of the firms that they would cash for. They'd look on the list there and uh, some of the list might have a red pen put through it so they'd say, sorry, we're not cashing them cheques at the moment. You know, then it's time to start looking for a different job, isn't it? <laughs> Keep the check as a souvenir or your last job. <laughs> there was 19 halls, dance, Irish dance halls in London alone when I came here in 87 and the last one closed there a couple of years ago, the Galtie Moor just straight across the road from us there. From all over the whole of Ireland, from the north to the south to the east to the west to the provinces, whatever you like, they were all there going to a dance or something like that. Packed with Irish, Saturdays, Sundays, every night of the week it'd be opened, packed out inside it. Now it's closed. That's all gone. I do when I was young was round chasing girls and dancing. <laughs> what did you mean? But had a right I, I, to offer that though. But however. There was the Chichili Cafe on the corner there and Lil God rest her, would open at six o'clock in the morning and uh, the people would all burst in and they would all make a queue up and have our tea and sandwich. And um, there'd be as many more queuing outside the door out onto the towpath. Now there's no one of them people, they're not about at all now, they're not in the buildings anywhere. That's the story, and you don't see an Irish person nearly at all now. There were loads of Irish people here, everybody working, that was able to work. And money was very good that time, but it's completely and so totally gone now. It was 90% Irish here that time, and 10% foreigners. Now it's 10% uh, it's Irish and 90% foreigners. It's Chichilla Road. If you ever go there and watch it, it's, it's marvellous. All Poles. Bosnians, Romanians, every nationality, are looking for work. And they stay there until one, two o'clock in the day, looking for a shift. And if you go there Saturday and Sunday, they'll come there. And she's wishing to hope. See, we thought they are. And they work really for peanuts. The Irish are all gone home. And they're all under the ground in the last 15, 20 years because Crickle Road was full of Irish. There's no doubt about it. My God Almighty, they were the good days though.